Hey guys, it's me Sarah, the video editor here at Wholesale Ted, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about how to build a million dollar store with print on demand. Yes, we have had tons of requests of people asking us to talk about print on demand, which is kind of like another form of drop shipping, but it doesn't use AliExpress. Just a quick explanation for my viewers out there that don't know much about print on demand. How it works is you take a piece of artwork like this and you then install an app like Printful into your Shopify store which will take the artwork and put it onto different items like t-shirts. Then when a customer comes to your store and orders a t-shirt, Printful will print that individual t-shirt and ship it out directly to your customer which is why it's called print on demand and arguably could be called a form of drop shipping. So to help me with this video today, I have one of the top experts in the world at print on demand, Michael. Michael built a store that in just one year did over a million dollars with just print on demand products. So I'm just gonna switch over to the interview that I did with Michael, where he shared with me some of the top performing products that he sold in his store, explained why they sold so well, and also gave some tips on how you guys can pick your own winning items. Thanks for coming on to Wholesale Ted, Michael. So let's just jump straight into it. Um, so, alrighty, let's take a look at this t-shirt here. I believe you told me that this was the first winning item the store had. It's a pretty looking awesome t-shirt, I must say. So my question for you, Michael, is a two-part question. Firstly, do you think, like, sorry, how much roughly do you think that money this t-shirt made each month? And secondly, um, why do you think it sold so well? I think our viewers would love some insider tips on how they can choose their own winning print-on-demand products like this one. Yeah, first of all, thanks for having me on. And this design or this t-shirt right here is actually one of our first designs in the store. And um, basically, we got sales right away. It did around five figures a month on this one. And the reason why it did so well or we got sales right away is because we actually tapped into a very passionate niche. And we also did our research beforehand to find our interests. So if we look into the audience insights tool, we can see that, let's say, the gothic fashion niche is around 2 to 2.5 million active people in that niche. And we can also expand into the sugar skull niche, which is similar. And that is around two to 2.5 million as well. So when we have a good product and we put it in front of a passionate audience, we can get engagement right away. And sometimes we can get sales as well. And these indicators actually help us tell us what um, we should do next. And during this whole process, um, we're running Facebook advertising. So everything is being tracked. All the activities that our customer are performing on our store is being tracked. So when we scale with designs like this and other designs, it makes it so much easier. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. Um, there's some great tips there. I love that niche, by the way. Um, so I've got another question. I know that clearly, you know, as your store made over a million dollars, that you're an absolute ninja at creating profitable Facebook ad campaigns and scaling them. Um, can you please share with us some of the, sorry, the process of how once you find a winning product like that t-shirt, that you scale up your Facebook ads to make those massive profits? Yes, yeah, so when we're talking about Facebook ads, there are actually different ways for scaling. We can scale vertically by increasing the budget, we can either scale horizontally by testing more interest, create lookalike audiences, or split test different conversion events. So with this one in particular, we did both vertical and horizontal, and also we added a funnel and backend. Now, this is important because with a funnel, we can increase our average order value, and that will increase our margin for us to spend more on ads, also have more profit, and... That is why the funnel was so important in this case. Oh, yes. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, so actually, I want to just like quickly shift gears here um, and move on to the next product um, that your store successfully sold. Um, and this is this nifty pillowcase here. Um, mm -hmm. So this design um, is a bit different from the t-shirt, but it's still similar. It uses a similar color scheme and it's also targeting um, that the same niche. So here's my question for you. Um, where do you find awesome designs and artwork like this that you use um, for this pillowcase? Yeah, so there are actually different ways to do research. We can go to different performing, uh, different top performing Shopify stores to look for designs, ideas, 
and also different marketplaces. But one thing is we shouldn't copy any design pixel by pixel. We need to be creative and create something that's ours. And another thing to keep note is any designs that we do buy should have commercial license for us to use it. And some places to go to will be Shutter, uh, stock.com or iStockPhotos.com. You can actually buy commercial uh, license for that to use on your design. And if you were to hire your own designer, you have to communicate that with your designer as well. Make sure they're creating designs um, from scratch or they have commercial license to use it. This is very important because we don't want it to bite us in the butt down the road or um, <laughs> get any down notice down the road as well. So just do our due diligence to do our research and create nice, awesome designs on what's already selling out there. Awesome. Thank you. Yes, I completely and utterly agree. It is so important to make sure that you use artwork that you have the rights to use so that you do not get sued. Um, so let's move on to the third winning product, these shoes. I can see that they have the same design as the pillowcase, but you just transplanted planted them Sorry, onto the shoes. So my question for you, Michael, is actually a two-part question. Um, so firstly, when most people um, think of print-on-demand, they usually think about selling things like t-shirts and hoodies. But obviously, this store successfully expanded into other types of items, you know, shoes and pillowcases. Um, are there any other types of print-on-demand items that you've successfully sold? And the second part of my question, what type of item do you think is the most underutilized one that most people don't think to sell, but they should because it sells super well, like pillowcases. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's actually a very good question because the print-on-demand industry has grown significantly in the past year, and there's actually more products that we actually can print on. And I do have some samples right here. So if you can see my screen, I have a glassware right now um, ah. that we print on this is actually engraving and it's print on demand i don't know if you can see the text here but that is glassware we can actually print on demand and there's also shot glasses as well and these are great during father's day so those are two examples and i do have other ones that so these actually i just mentioned these are from print tech they're really great and another example is shine on they make jewelries print on demand and the quality is actually very good and it comes with these boxes. So the whole unboxing experience for your customer is really nice. And you can actually put um, a discount code inside these boxes for them to come back to your store. And then with Shine On, they're from um, the USA, New Jersey. So the shipping time is really good. So your retention rate for your customer to come back to your store will be really high if you sell products that are high value and they're from the United States. So here are just some examples, and people don't normally think about these products when they think about print on demand. So we have some um, bracelets over here. This is a charm bracelet. We can even upsell other charms onto this bracelet. So these actually sold really well for me, and that just gives you an idea of how you can expand outwards from just selling t-shirts. Yeah, no, it's crazy. Almost no one thinks of selling things like shot glasses and wine glasses. So that's that's a fantastic insight there. Um, so now that we've seen some of your winning products from your store, I'd love to hear even more of your insight, um, this time into the process that you go through when testing different Facebook ads for products, because you know I'm sure that you've created products in your store before and you thought that they would be winners and you've run Facebook ads for them only to find out that the products didn't convert well at all. Oh, and I think that for many people, when they do this, when they put a product into their store and they run an ad for it only for that product to not sell and convert, it can be incredibly frustrating and they give up. However, mm -hmm. I know that you don't. You instead just add new products and you keep running ads. Of course, you know, eventually you do find one that connects and converts with a buyer base. And in this industry, of course, we call that process testing products. So can you please explain for my viewers here, the process um, that you go through to test products, which you know ultimately helps you identify winning items that then go on to make the massive profits for your store. Right. So there's actually a few different ways for testing. And one way is actually just to ask your customer what they want. So what you can do is create a 
engagement ad on Facebook with um, four different products on that one image, label it A, B, C, and D, and ask your customer, hey, which product do you want? And once you monitor the comments and find out what is working, then you can take that product and put it into its own campaign and start scaling that uh, product. So that is one method of testing and it's really easy to do. And you can actually utilize the same concept by sending it out to your mailing list and ask them what they like. So that's a very cheap way to test. Now, another way, which is more advanced, is um, basically a giveaway model to a collection page. Now, I really like this model because you can essentially do a tripwire um, concept where you're giving away, for example, a tote bag and your customer is covering the shipping for you if they do pick it up. But the whole idea is for them to click on that ad, come to your store, to a collection page with that image they already pre-sold on to a whole bunch of different products. So. That image can be on um, leggings, t-shirts, mugs, and as they come to your store, maybe they'll buy leggings uh, more than the other products. Then you know, hey, that leggings actually perform pretty well. Now I'm going to take that product and put it as my main front end product and start scaling. So those are just two really good ways for you to uh, perform during the test phase. Nice. I love that advanced tip. I'm, I'm totally going to make use of that. Um, so thank you again, Michael. Um, I'm sure a lot of my viewers really appreciate it. It's always nice to see that even advanced dropshippers and people who make all this money still have to test products. Um, so of course, giving up too early is definitely a mistake um, that I see people who are new to dropshipping and new to print on demand make. I'm wondering though, could you give us three other big mistakes that you see new stores make um, and any tips for avoiding these mistakes? So there are actually a couple things that can come into mind when I'm thinking about mistakes that people make. The first is people stop testing after they find a winner. So what that means is um, they might find that a t-shirt is performing really well and they only scale t-shirts or that campaign only but they never actually take that design and put it onto, let's say, a leggings for this example. Um, you don't know what your demographic actually want. So without testing, you're actually leave, leaving a lot of money on the table. So my advice for, for people who are listening is, once you have a winner, definitely test other products to find out if maybe other product will take off even more. So that's number one. Number two is actually scaling too early. And when we're talking about Facebook ads, there's this thing called the, um, there's this thing called the, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah. So when we're talking about Facebook ads, there's this thing called the learning phase. And if we scale too early, Facebook will actually kill the optimization. And that is, when you hear a lot of people say, when I start scaling my campaign and it dies off, and that's because Facebook needs more data before you can even touch that campaign. So just wait until the initial um, phase, learning phase is over before you touch that campaign. Now, number three is having or not having a funnel in place. Now, having a funnel, like I mentioned earlier, is very important because you can actually increase the average order value, have more margin. This allows you to spend more on ads and also bid uh, higher on your campaign. So always have a funnel in place once you find out if something is working. Cool. Awesome. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, those tips were fantastic. And I can see that this interview has gone on a bit longer than I promised. So we will call it here. So there you guys go. I hope you enjoyed seeing real life examples of winning print on demand products. And I've also got some exciting news. We are running a live webinar with Michael. In this webinar, Michael is going to be giving a deeper insider look into how he built his automated print on demand store that went on to do over a million dollars in a single year. And if that sounds like something that you would like to learn more about, you should be sure to register in the link in the video description below. Please note, you do need to register as this will not be streamed live on YouTube. And of course, as always, we have our free ebook, which teaches you the six steps that six figure stores follow to make over $10,000 every month with dropshipping. And you can find a link to that ebook also in the video description below.